Welcome to the channel. It's Jack, the muscle and mobility maker with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to fix that lumbar herniated disc that's giving you that piriformis syndrome, that sciatic pain running down through the leg, and overall, just a recovery path that you can take to help you fully resolve what's going on in your lumbar spine. But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine, and it doesn't get better than that. So take advantage of it. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive into this one. Like I said, today I'm going to be showing you how to fix that lumbar herniated disc with sciatic pain, tight piriformis, all those muscles getting tightened from that compressed nerve. So we're going to be going through a series of exercises that you can use to jumpstart your recovery process if you've just recently herniated a disc and you can go ahead and help yourself by resolving those symptoms that you're getting down in the leg there. The thing that we're going to be looking for is not necessarily that the symptoms clearly go away automatically, but that they start to progress closer to the center of your body, especially if they're further down the leg. So that is something that's important to understand. Immediately, you might not feel 100% relief, but we should notice that the symptoms start to get closer to that center of the origin in the spine there at the lumbar spine. So we wanna look for those symptoms to move closer. Ready? Let's go ahead and dive into these exercises and I'll talk you through them as we go here. All right, one of the first things we wanna do when you're dealing with a herniated lumbar disc is start to restore the position of that disc. With the bulge, it is pushing out the back of the spine and compressing the nerve as it passes through there. So it, restoring extension can be very helpful or using extension to restore the position of the disc can be very helpful to take pressure off of that nerve. Here I'm using crocodile breathing to help start that process. The reason this is so beneficial is because it's going to help me activate my parasympathetic nervous system. So it actually takes down the flight or fight response, fight or flight response in our body and allow you to relax into the position rather than going straight to press ups, which will often be done. So what we wanna focus on here is completely relaxing into the floor, melting into the floor as we just focus on nasal only diaphragmatic breathing. Now you'll see that I started with my face completely flat, arms in a field goal position, and I'm gonna gradually increase the height of my extension as I'm doing this crocodile breathing. So I move to flat hands, then up to one fist, and then we're gonna move it up to two fists once I get to that point. Now we're ready to start to add some motion. Now the key here with the diaphragmatic breathing is feeling that natural rhythm of the breath. So our ribs are actually going to expand and open wide in that inhale, and then they're going to go ahead and shrink on the exhale and contract on the exhale. So you should feel that rhythm and it creates a natural massaging effect to your thoracic spine and you should even feel that down into your lumbar spine through the diaphragmatic part of that as you're breathing the increased pressure and decreased pressure. So here we're into the press ups now. I'm going to start with just my forearms down to the floor and I'm lifting my chest from the floor, keeping my chin tucked to my Adam's apple, apple focusing on the upper back doing the work. So I wanna feel my scapula pulling down and back into my mid back as I extend here. Then as you're feeling more comfortable, you're gonna progress that to the hands and put about a mid height, something a little bit higher than that forearm lift pushing a little bit through the arms and eventually fully extending. Now keep in mind, this is a progression that you will have to build up over time. The first portion may take you a few minutes just to feel completely settled and relaxed in that parasympathetic breathing before you start to go to press ups. And don't feel like you have to go to full extension on the press ups right away. Again, it is something that we want to build the height of over time and restore through that consistency. So take your time with it, building it up. The next exercise I'm showing is a banded decompression technique. So what we're going to do is take a heavy pull-up band 
and anchor it around a pull-up bar. What I want to do is place it as I step through along my lower back so it's across my lumbar spine and then I'm going to use the tension of the band to help kneel down and lower myself to the floor so that I'm able to lie down with that band pulling directly up into that pull-up bar. So here my feet are planted flat. I'm simply relaxing into the position, again, focusing on my diaphragmatic breathing to allow my parasympathetic nervous system to really kick in here and things to relax around the pull of the band. This is a great one to help restore the position of the disc and pull you into that extension and actually assist with some range of motion that you might not currently have there. Take your time. Again, focus on diaphragmatic nasal only breathing and allow it to settle in with some time here. You can also add a little bit of an elevation of the feet. So what you can do is take your feet and place them up on the band itself. And you'll see me do this in a second and allow the band to actually lift and pull you up slightly from the floor with your lower body. I would recommend starting with the feet down first, letting that settle in and then moving into the decompressed position fully allowing the support of the band to take you. When you're ready to come out of it, you're simply going to take both legs down gradually, taking your time, and you're going to grab that band and use again the assistance of the tension of the band to walk yourself back up. Next, we're going to do some flossing of the sciatic nerve. Now this is important here to understand that we need to be careful in how we perform this one. First of all, we want to make sure that the tailbone is not tucked so we're not in posterior pelvic tilt and that you're keeping a neutral spine. So making sure that you're not flattening your low back as you pull the knee up toward your chest. Then the other important part is that we're not going any further than the point of feeling some gentle tension to each extension of the leg. The key is that we gradually improve the range of motion over time and not force it any further than we need to with that gentle tension as the leg is extending. So take your time with this one. Again, build up the range of motion gradually as your body restores comfort through that range. Once you're feeling more comfortable with your flossing without any added resistance or assistance here, it can help to actually have a band to pull the spine into a slightly decompressed position. So we're actually providing a little bit of traction from below at the hip here specifically, and then perform our leg extension from there. Once again, only going to the point where we feel a gentle pulling and gradually building up the range of motion over time with the repetitions. Next, your hips have a lot of effect on your lumbar spine positioning and your pelvis overall. If your adductors are tight, then we're chronically being pulled in an internally rotated hip position, and this can affect our SI joint and how we feel the pressure on that sciatic nerve. So we wanna make sure that we open up our adductors, and here I'm using a frog rock back. So I'm gonna sit back into kind of a child's pose here, and then extend the hips, focusing on flexing the glutes. I will get a little bit of lumbar extension there as well and I'm getting a little spinal movement, which is good to start to restore that as well as we open up our hip adductors. Once you're feeling more confident and you wanna progress that frog and open up those adductors a little bit more, we can do some loaded butterfly work. So here you're gonna put yourself against the wall in the corner of a room, and we're gonna take some kettlebells or dumbbells and place them on the inner knee. These are 25 pounds here, so I'm not using a significant amount of weight, but it's enough to challenge myself. What I'm gonna do is actively resist my own pressure, pushing down against the kettlebells on the knees as I try and actually drive the knees up into the kettlebells for about five to 10 seconds. As I'm doing that drive, you'll actually see me arch my lumbar spine a little bit 
and then as I relax for about 10 seconds in between, allowing the weight and the pressure of my hands to open those legs deeper toward the floor, I'm going to flatten out my lumbar spine toward the wall. Again, we're getting some restored motion to the spinal column here in gentle ways, but also opening up those adductors, which can be problematic if they are tight around the hips constantly. Still focusing on the hips here, we're going to hone in on the piriformis. So what we want to do is place the leg up on the wall and cross our other leg over the knee there, just above the knee. So I slide my foot down into a bent position, and this is a nice gentle way to begin to stretch your piriformis. I'm not pushing, I'm just holding my leg in place, trying to allow it to open up as much as possible here as I have one hand on the foot, opening the foot toward my head and then one hand on the knee, just gently in place there. Think of relaxing the shoulder blades there and letting them settle down and back. Once you get comfortable in that position, you can rotate to the point where you bring that foot all the way to the floor as it's still over that thigh, and you're gonna hold the ankle. Again, we wanna allow that knee to just fall open as much as possible in this position and relax into it to hit that piriformis directly. Once you're comfortable doing that without anything, now we're going to add the band so that we can increase the amount of traction and pull that we get at the hip itself and allow it to settle into that rotation a little bit deeper. So what we wanna do is once again, set up the same position, band deep in the hip here, one leg over the knee, we're gonna to rotate to the floor that side. And this is important to note that you're using or putting the leg that is affected by the sciatica. So if there is your left leg that's affected by the sciatica, we want this to be your left leg. If it is your right leg that's affected by the sciatica, we want it to be your right leg or the piriformis that's tighter on that side, which would likely give you sciatica symptoms. Lastly, we want to restore some extension to the hip and strength to the hip itself. So here we're doing extension through the gluteals here in a prone position. You want to lie again, kind of similar to that crocodile breathing position, bend the knee and you're thinking of lifting the quadriceps from the floor as you flex the glutes to drive the pelvis into the floor. We want to see how high you can lift the quads from the floor as you pick that knee up and flex the glutes each time. Once you're able to do that, we can do a full extension of the leg, so straightening the leg and thinking of lifting from the hip itself, from the glutes, raising the leg. And then finally, what we'll do is add a rotation to that as you gain range of motion and strength again in order to fully open up and strengthen those glutes, but also to help with restoring range of motion to your extension of the spine and rotation at the same time. So again, these are progressions. We're making sure that we can do each level before we move to the next and try and take that next step. Make sure that you're able to do the bent knee extensions before the straight leg and the straight leg before the scorpion here. All right, and there you have it, a simple approach that you can use to jumpstart your recovery process and help you fully recover that lumbar herniated disc and help you resolve that sciatica and tight piriformis, all that musculature around the leg. If you like this video, make sure you let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend. Maybe you know they've struggled with a herniated disc in the past or that they recently did injure themselves in the gym pass it along their way, give them some love, make sure that they can take care of themselves as well. If you're somebody who would like direct help fully resolving your lumbar disc herniation and getting back to a point where you're confidently able to go back to the gym and exercise and lift pain-free, then what I want you to do right now is drop down below in the description to fill out a coaching application and schedule your mobility blueprint call. This will be our opportunity to jump on a call together so that we can assess where you're currently at. It's each individual situation is slightly unique and we want to treat it that way. So we'll be looking at your current mobility limitations, 
getting all the information that we need to gather to make sure that you're ready to move forward and then tailoring the program specifically to your needs. Once we have all that information, we can lay out what that program will look like, give you the full details and explain any questions that you have clearly answered them for you. So if that sounds good, down below in the description, fill out that coaching application, get that call scheduled, and we will get you running and moving in the right direction from there. Last but not least, if you have not already, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Saturday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve aches and pains, prevent injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine, and it does not get better than that. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. We'll see you next week.